boy Scotty Kicks, and I'm here with somebody that's real important. Koei from Koei Productions. How you feeling today? Um, I'm good. Happy New Year. All right, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So, you know, we're here, going to be doing this interview, and I got some questions for you. Yep. All right. So let's roll with the first one. I think that, the you know, today, the people, the viewers, they want to know, who is Koei? Uh, Koei is myself. Um... I've been working on myself, I want to say, for like, on and off for like 10, 11 years now. Um, oh, yeah, I want it to be like a soul media production type thing. All right, cool. So, Underground Goat. Why do you call yourself the Underground Goat? I feel like I'm very in tune with the underground world. I feel like I'm constantly finding new artists, and I feel like... A lot of artists I do find and I do like look at ends up blowing up. So I feel like I kind of see the sauce early on. That makes sense. All right. So you feel like you have the eye? Yes. Do you? Not everybody got the eye. <laughs> so do you feel like some people try to like steal your recipe or snatch um, your, your way of finding people? It's not really a recipe to find people. I feel like it's more so seeing potential and creative ways to market and all that type of thing. I don't really think it's, I feel like everybody doesn't have that it factor. So you gotta see it before it be it, if that makes sense. All right. So being able to recognize talent is a job in itself. Yeah. Got you, got you. So um, check your page out, Code Productions on YouTube, mm -hmm. everything on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and um. Just want to talk a little bit about your history in the game. So um, tell us about Love in Brooklyn. Okay, Love in Brooklyn, I started when I was in high school, probably like 10th grade. Um, I found everyone in the show I found off social media. I didn't know nobody beforehand. So I kind of just linked with them. I was like, yo, I have an idea. They was with it. We shot it, and the first episode was bigger than I expected. So we ended up doing more and more up until everybody graduated high school. And just, you know, we all kind of split ways. But, yeah, it was kind of just an idea I had, and I was talking about it on Facebook and reaching out to people, and I just kind of, like, put it together. All right. So that idea that you had right there, and you actually went about making it become a reality, what made you... Like, what brought you to that idea? Mm. I just felt like it was a lot of people that was, like, popular online, but everybody's popular for their own thing. So some people are funny. Some people are popular for their outfits, I guess, like, best dress kind of thing. And I just kind of, like, if everybody did something all together, I felt like it would make sense. And that was just something different. You know, a lot of people want to be artists, a lot of people want to be this, that. i never really seen a web series upcoming. Kids, like, I just never saw one. I think that's dope. I, I even seen how it made its way to Hot 97, yeah. and then other boroughs came out and with their own. Loving Queens, yeah. Long Rounds, Rounds, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then so from going on from Love in Brooklyn, the next thing that you went to was you went to Changing the Game. Yeah, so changing the game, I did when I got back home from college. So I wanted to do Love in Brooklyn again, but the people were kind of like on to live their lives, kids, whatever, whatever. So with changing the game, I more so like want to go a different route, something more relatable, more present. And that's why I kind of went with that. All right, all right. So were there like certain certain things that you felt made your shows pop that you used in your recipe to cooking it up? Mm, no. I feel like it's just ways that we marketed it. Like with the episodes, we only used upcoming artist songs. The locations we use were like popular locations throughout the city. So that's kind of like what kept people talking about it. It's like, oh, you saw that show in this building? It's a show in my building. And it was just like, it just kept going from there. Got you, got you. Because one thing that I noticed when I was looking at Love in Brooklyn, 
I seen you had Low Key Mar as a character on your show. Mm -hmm. So like, how does that feel to know that when you start in, in the game, you, you have people that are relevant today on social media that were once a part of something that you were doing? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of the goal. I feel like everybody was kind of already doing their own thing. So it was kind of like one hand wash another type thing. So, yeah. Got you, got you. So you went from doing series and you did something that seemed like it was slightly different but it was still on YouTube and that was different views. So like what, what was that like and what inspired that? So when different views came about, I ended up having enough subscribers to be in a YouTube space. So that was filmed in a YouTube space. Um, with different views, I didn't really, wasn't comfortable being on camera yet, but I definitely wanted to start talking with artists and getting more into the music field. So I kind of like got a few of my friends to do interviews. And yeah, that's how that came about. Gotcha, gotcha. That's what's up. That's what's up. And now we're at where you're currently at today, which is Talk of the Town. So like, tell us what's Talk of the Town and how did this come to life? Talk of the Town, I was really inspired by Everyday Struggle. And I, I thought that we should have like a talk show for the underground artists. It's like, it's either you're mainstream or you're not. All these people that's like in the works, there's nowhere for them to even get coverage. There's no way to find them unless you just find them. So, yeah, with, with Talk of the Town, I wanted to do a talk show. So I found my co-host, Ellen Dre, and we kind of, like, put the talk show segment together. Then I was running the Instagram. I tried to do creative marketing things on Instagram to bring more traction to the talk show, and that's how that came about. <laughs> nah, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's a lot of work. Especially what you're saying, a show like Everyday Struggle, and you wanted to have that for the underground world. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to, they, they wonder what I'm about to ask you when I made your questions. Like, what's the engine behind Talk of the Town? Who are the, what's, what's, what, what, what are the people that make it work that we don't see or we don't really understand or know that? Well, I've been kind of doing mostly everything. Like, I make all the graphics for the page. I edit every show, I edit every interview, I do most of the interviews. So yeah, I pretty much do all that stuff. And then um, with the talk show part, you know, we come together and do that. I, I plan out the topics that we're going to talk about. I, plan, I try to make it like things that are relevant to today. Like we did an um, XXL cover for New York City. We did... Um, well, I did my top 25 female artists for the city because female artists don't get a lot of coverage. And Facts. Yeah, we got games where we rate artists. We do first week views where we check artists' views because it's no like billboard for upcoming artists. So that's how the first week views came about. And yeah. I think that's dope because it seems like, from what I'm hearing especially, that. Talk of the Town is something that's for people who are actually a fan of this type of music, but can also catch the attention of somebody who's just finding out about it, and they can, they can see what's popping and what's in right now. So that's the thing. I don't want it to be like this kind of music. Like, I want it to be just underground hip-hop overall. Gotcha. The drill scene is just really big in New York, so that's kind of the thing that everybody was looking for. But, yeah, I try to post other artists that's, Probably singers or female artists or they're really hard to find, but I'm I'm trying to look for all those kinds of people. So I'm I'm glad that you said that because like there's been some times when people were wondering like you know it's talking to town a, a drill page and I've seen times that you you were saying that it's not so you're making it clear now that it's it's about underground music overall. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. A specific yeah. type of music or like all underground music. Really, just underground hip hop. I mean. Yeah, underground hip hop. Got you, got you. So, this is a lot of, this is a lot of like notoriety and attention in a very short time span. Mm -hmm. So, my question with this is right now is how does it feel to be in a, a place like this and being recognized as an underground outlet and you're not even in your prime yet? Um, it's a lot of pressure. Um. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. 
And then it's like you always just got to stay 10 steps ahead. But also be creative too. So it's like you have to keep your fans engaged and also show them something new and give them a reason to why to just keep following and supporting. Gotcha. So that's a lot of like sleepless nights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So, all right. So you see, we spoke about four different shows right now. Yeah. That's been going on for a span of years now. Mm-hmm. So during that time, you know, a lot of, we see a lot of things just keep going forward. New series, new content. But I can only imagine how in between that, there's some times where it's probably, have you had some moments of like self-doubt or like hurdles you had to get over? Like, mm-hmm. what was that like? What did you do in between this stuff? Mm-hmm. A lot of sleep. <laughs> like, um... I, like, yeah, a lot of sleep. I kind of, like, some days, uh, some days, you probably won't post at all. Well, I won't post at all. I just need a day or two to myself. Yeah, that's pretty much it. For the most part, it really be the comments that's discouraging. It's not really the workload. Gotcha. It's like, are they perceiving this the way that I wanted to? Or are they misinterpreting what I, what I was trying to promote? Now, I like that you said that. And I want to ask you something else. But we're going to come back to that right there, that perspective. Because that's, mm-hmm. that's major. Yeah. Now, what I was kind of asking what the question was, along with what you said, is um, did you have times where in between these series that you, you did something else that we, didn't, we don't know about? Or did you have like times where you felt like, you know, it's hard? Because like... Us seeing you go from love in Brooklyn to talk of the town now, mm-hmm. we see a lot of growth in this time. Yeah. So, like, were there times where you felt like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it to this time right here? Um, and did yeah. you do something else? It's always times like that. Um, not really doing something else. It's more so just finding that spark again. So, whatever it takes, whether it's, for me, it's just watching videos and I got to get inspired, watch interviews, get motivated. That's what it really is for me. But everybody has their own way of how they get through things. Gotcha. So this footage out there that shows you behind the scenes at video shoots with artists. Mm -hmm. We've even seen times when you're usually sitting on the other end of the couch. So I can only imagine how it feels for you to be here as the interviewee. Mm -hmm. So you wear many hats. You know, so like, how, do, how does that feel to know that, you know, to be in a situation of somebody that's doing so many different things to make this happen? Um, it's, it could be overwhelming sometimes. Um, yeah, it could just be overwhelming sometimes, but I'm working on getting a team together to help me with all this stuff. So it's in the works and I'm gradually getting help as I go. Got you. So. What would you say to somebody who's just getting started and they feel like they're running into a lot of moments of, I can't do this? Like, what would you say from your experience? It's no such thing. <laughs> it's no such thing. I don't know what people be waiting for. I just feel like when, when, pe- when people say New York City is a city that never sleeps, like, it really doesn't. So for me, it's like when I'm, when I'm sleeping, somebody's working. When you're asleep, somebody's working. So it's just like, just pushing yourself to do even when you don't want to. So you basically, even you might have been been presented opportunities, but a lot of times you you didn't have an opportunity. You just made one. Um. Yeah. And making opportunities is more so just being consistent. Got you. Just constantly having your hand in everything, if you can handle it. If so some people can handle it. So which series would you say out of the four? that we presented, you know, was the one that you felt like was, you really had to make it happen yourself? Well, Talk of the Town was definitely one. But with the series and all that, that was more so dependent on other folks. And that could be a whole nother hassle. So... Why? Just like work on people's time, work on people's schedule, work on people's life circumstances. That's the whole hassle on its own. With Talk of the Town, it's more so me pacing myself to 
get things done and making it make sense and trying different ways to entertain the audience. So, yeah. Got you. So it's like it's like highs and lows and different ways and all of that. Yeah. Dealing with different type of people and then times de- dealing with artists and their reaction to your content that you're putting out. Yeah, which I feel like it's it's always New York City is biased and I think that's just the best way to put it. Gotcha. But I try to cover everyone fairly. That's my goal. Nobody like it's not balanced in the industry. Gotcha. So with that being said, you have times where you have um you have your perspective from your content and no matter how clear you are you still have an artist's perspective and their their own um, responses like mm-hmm. how does that how do you react to that how does it make you feel at times um sometimes i'm upset when artists don't understand the like overall goal and mission of the platform that's frustrating sometimes but i, I try to explain it as much and as clearly as possible but I don't know. Some people get it, some people don't. Got you, got you. So um, I can only imagine how that feels. A couple months ago, seen on YouTube, there was um, a video up with OMB JD, mm-hmm. and he had a perspective about Talk of the Town. Yeah. You know, so what was that like? What was that about? What was it like? Um, more so, um, when artists are upset, they post things on social media, and we shared it, and he was upset that we shared it, but I wanted him to more so realize that when you're an artist and a lot of eyes on you, just certain things just should stay off social media. So we didn't speak about it since, but I think we're good. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So I can only imagine how that feels. So with it being times where if it if it brought any discomfort to you, do you feel like there was anything that was positive that came out of that? Um, I just really wanted artists to take heat that eyes are always constantly on you, especially when you're in the spotlight and just being careful of what you post on social media. Gotcha. That was kind of my lesson to all artists. Not saying that was the case, but that's something that blog pages do. And if you was to be signed tomorrow and the Shade Room posted something you posted or college kid posted something you posted, it's like, you can't really be mad at them. That's kind of their job. So as a blog page, it's kind of our job. Got you. So what you saying that there's, there's times when people may feel like you're being biased towards a certain type of artist, a certain type of area, anything like that. Are you, are you ever biased towards something? No, that's the thing. I'm trying not to be biased. And I feel like artists, I don't know. Like, I'm trying clearly not to be biased. I feel like it's obvious as ever, but I don't know. I feel like people are always going to feel like they're better than someone. So people are going to always want more coverage than someone. And I mean, as an artist, you should feel that way. But you, like, it's, it's kind of our job to cover everybody. So. Gotcha. So even in moments like this, you definitely expressed your love and support for Brooklyn underground artists. So why do you, what still drives you in that moment? And like, what even inspired that? Inspired what? That love and support that you have for Brooklyn underground artists. Um, I just see artists working so hard all the time and they might not ever get the deal they want or they might be wrapped up in a messed up contract or they might not even know how to go about even getting seen. So my goal was more so to have this kind of outlet for artists to get seen by labels and a and and things like that. And for artists to feel like celebrities, I guess, even if they achieve what they want to achieve yet. Got you. So I'm, I really like how you said that because now we're going to, you're gonna let you talk your shit right now. Cause I think there's something that you did that was like really, really dope. And that was the Talk of the Town Awards. So yeah. I wanna know, first thing I wanna know is what, in, what inspired that? I wanted to do that for a little minute now, probably like halfway through the year. 
Um, I was working on getting awards made, I want to say since like November. And um, just trying to find different ways to get them made. And I had so many categories for the, for the um, topics. Mm -hmm. So with budgeting and trying to figure everything out. I really just wanted to have artists feel accomplished for all the work they did this year. Uh, and then what made it even more better is I didn't handpick these people. I just handpicked the nominations and the people picked the winner. So this means that you built the fan base and you earned it. And that, that's major. That's major. So how does it, how does it feel to be somebody that you, you say underground, you know, but you... You created a platform for people to pick themselves and have a voice, <laughs> regardless of whatever a stream said. Yeah. And these artists won because it was 100% the people. But yeah. how does it feel to be somebody that created something like that? Um, I didn't think that yeah, far into it. Yeah, talk your shit about that. That's <laughs> I didn't think that far into it, but um, I feel like all award shows should be fair like that. I don't know how they go about picking people, but... I feel like the people should have a, a chance to pick something. Like, how many times they see award shows, and be like, damn, that person won? And be like, how? Based <laughs> on what? Yeah, like, yeah. we don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I post who won, and I post the votes. So maybe artists could see, oh, I was in third place. Maybe I got to work a little harder this year. Or artists could see, oh, I was in fourth place. Maybe I should try something different this year. Or, yo, I was in second place. I'm right there. Like... You know, just like it's, I want, I want it to be more so motivation for the artist. Yeah, yeah, it's, I think this is lit. And it, it's like a, I don't want to say progress report, but it allows people to see how people perceive them, you know, and what they can do and, and also get to get light that they might not get in the industry. Yeah. Well, I've seen people on your post getting their plaques, big smiles on their face, people promoting it. Yeah. Um, through reposting and things like that, so that's that's a major accomplishment. Yeah, made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. So now the next thing I see you doing after that is you went right into something else, and that thing was bars of the town. To talk to us <laughs> about that. Yeah. Um. I felt like we don't have no freestyle basement really platform. The biggest freestyle platform in New York is. Fun flex and no, oh, everybody can't go up there. So I wanted to do something where like everybody has a shot. Like I'm trying to make it so everybody has a shot to do a freestyle, but realistically, I don't know. It's a work in progress. But yeah, I wanted to do something. I wanted to bring back freestyles for artists. It's artists that can really rap, but probably don't have the numbers, the fans, whatever, whatever it is that they're missing, but they can really rap. All right. Where's the platform for those people? That's true. And you know, it's crazy. I think that this might even be something that will help people like, well, entities like Hot 97 find people to have on the freestyles. Cause this Hopefully. is, this is real current. You know, like, this is what's happening today. This is what the people want to hear, what the people want to see. And so many different things of it is coming from one person. That's very impactful. You could do a bigger smile, you know, you could talk a little <laughs> shit about I mean, that. I damn, you know? like, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. All right. I mean, this is stuff that I've been wanting to do. It was, i just been talking about it, trying to find a space for it, trying to get the money for it. So it's kind of like everything you've been dreaming, finally putting into place. So I'm not as excited, I guess, as people would expect. Mm -hmm. But I'm more so just happy that I did it. If that makes sense, because I don't know what the pro what the progression will look like yet, but I'm just happy I opened the door at least. Got you. You did more than open the door. You like you walking down the hallway. You know? <laughs> so like, I think one thing that people probably are assuming or want to know officially: Did you go to school for this? No. No. So you're self-taught. Yeah, I'm self-taught. Learned everything off of YouTube. Got you. Watching videos, tutorials. Constantly. <laughs> but it, it, Trial it's, and error. It's, it's got to be more than that. It can't just be, I watched YouTube and I did it. There's a lot of how-to videos online. Yeah, it's the how-tos. It's the investments. Because even though you watch the how-to, you still got to buy all the equipment to do the how-to. 
So that's one thing. And I'm sure people see my quality from back then to now. And some interviews was bad quality, I'm sure y'all seen. So it's like, it's gra- I'm gradually, gradually fixing it because I'm gradually learning. So what parts, what part of this process that had nothing to do with YouTube? That wasn't a video of somebody else doing something that showed you. It was you putting this in. Like, for example, drive, determination. Like, what, what are certain things that it, it, it was just Nicole adding to that video that you were watching? Um, I feel like with editing, it's more so you learn the basics and you add your own source to it. Um, audio is a whole different story. It's kind of like one, two, three type thing. So, yeah, with the video editing, of course, with um, the graphics, all the graphics on the page I made. So kind of just finding creative ways to market what I'm marketing. All right. So now I'm going to ask you a question now. Through your history, um, tell us about a time that you, you did an interview, one of your first ones, I guess, that you felt like you bombed. And why you felt like you bombed? One of my first interviews that I bombed, like, did really good. Nah, you, you felt like you failed. And it made you oh. question what you're doing. You want me to, like, name the interview? I mean, whatever you want to <laughs> say. If you feel like you don't want to say, but I mean, part of this process, I can only assume there's been times that you failed. You know, that, any, that you feel yeah, like you like failed. So what was that like? Interviews, um, a few interviews, and it was more so... With me, I'm the type of person, once I have an idea, I'm on it. And I'm just using whatever I have at the moment. And I shouldn't, it's, it should, I shouldn't like call on those big names unless I have all the technicals in place. So I had to learn that gradually because me, I'm more so a person like, once I got this person on the line, I'm ready. And I'll do whatever it is to, to get ready. But as I was doing that and then going back trying to edit it and fix all the mistakes and I can't even be mad at the people helping me because they're just helping me yeah. so it was me more so learning the technical as I'm going and learning the equipment as I'm going like when I'm filming YouTube they have access to lots of equipment I'm watching videos the day before I shoot just because I know like y'all got access to this and this when I'm getting there I'm watching tutorials the day before I buy equipment, so I know I right, tomorrow I'm about to buy that. I gotta figure out how to use it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was more so child and error. And yeah, I bought the wrong stuff nine times, but yeah, I messed up a few interviews, and luckily I got to do some of them over. Some of them I didn't get to do over, but. Do you feel like you bombed off of like you in the interview, not your equipment? Like you feel like you did a bad job? And it made you question, like, man, I don't know if this is something I should be doing? No. If I did, it was because I was rushing. Because I used to book, like, five interviews in a day because I was limited to the space. But now I have my own space, so now I can, like, space out people and all that type stuff. But, yeah, I used to be real limited to my space and time. So I try to get as much done in one shot. All right. So, I asked you about the low moments. What, what moment did you have that you say, you know what, I think that this might go somewhere? What was that like? What do you mean? Like, you know, a person that you got, either got access to interview or go to their shoot, or, you know, things just started to make sense. What? what? I don't need the question. All right, so... You have access to more things now than you did in the past, right? Mm, I wouldn't say that only because of COVID. But if COVID wasn't here, I probably would, yeah. All right. So you, didn't, you haven't had a moment yet where you felt like, you know, I, I feel like I understand this a lot better now? Right now. Right now? <laughs> yeah. It looks like that. I, you know, I just wanted to hear what you were going to say. Like, talk of the town definitely shows, like, this is like a step forward you know, another level up. So, um, what's next for you? Um, well, I'm continuing Bars of the Town. I'm going to continue interviewing artists. Yeah, everything else, it's not 
directly in place yet, but I have some ideas I want to do in 2021. Got you, got you. So we, we got to just keep checking your page out because <laughs> you got some content coming. Yeah. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. So we about to close out now, y'all. It's your boy, Scotty Kicks. I'm here with Koei, and this is an interview with Koei Productions. <laughs>